Hey guys, so today I want to share with you a knitting machine I picked up a few months ago on Amazon. It was, at the time, their least expensive knitting machine. And that was the larger size. So this is 48 needles. Um, when I checked it before I got on here, I think it's in the 50s, like low 50s. So still, again, one of the less expensive ones if you're compared to the Addy, which is obviously a couple hundred. Um, maybe in 300 bucks, depending on where you find it. Um, uh, and the Centro, which is like in the 60s. Um, again, depends on the size. So I've done the Chorl, and you see it right here in the 40 uh, pin Centro. I do have the 48, I just haven't opened it yet. But this is a 48 pin, less expensive machine, and I don't even know what this is. Z-C-V-T-B-Y-E, that's the brand, all right, guys? <laughs> Whenever I ordered the other one, it does say Centro on it, this one here, but the brand was like, I don't even know, something that funky like this, like some weird letters, so you know how this goes. Uh, but I will link uh, the machine uh, to Amazon there, and that will be an affiliate link, which means I'll make a small commission for your purchase items through those links. I'm assuming this is very much a central machine, just a different colorway, and um, we'll see. I mean, even the packaging is very similar. I wrote up a little pattern because I want to make a fun hat. We will see. I've never used this machine, so hopefully color changes and things like that won't be a problem. Um, I try to keep things very easy so that the it works up but I don't want to bore you with the same hat you see all the time so in my mind I want to make like a sock monkey hat <laughs> meaning the colors of a sock monkey not so much um, with the added like little face and stuff like that which I used to do on crochet hats for like babies for like photo props which was really fun but I just want the colors of that so um, we'll talk about that in just a minute but it says magic loop loom more than a toy all right guys they're eight plus so I've never opened this um, it says new, it says giveaway, I don't know, oh, it might have some of these, oh my gosh. Well, it depends on how well these work. Pom-pom uh, makers, I just bought a pom-pom maker literally for this project, so um, maybe I won't need to use it. Maybe I can return it. Alright, well let's open this guy up. It does have some tape on the top. Reach over to my daughter's little desk here. I am in my dining room, but she has like a little school desk I picked up, like a vintage one. And it holds a lot of her little things, so anyhow. Um, let's see here. Oh, more tape? Okay. <laughs> so, sorry. I put the things away and... And there's probably another piece down here, I'm assuming. Yeah. We're going to put this together, obviously, because it needs some assembly. Don't mind me, my daughter likes to have a lot of blankets with her when she sits at the dining table, so there's tons of blankets in that one chair. Okay, is this upside down? It must be. Let's turn it the other way. Um, is showing you if you want tight tension, moderate tension, or loose. Uh, with tensioners, I, I more often than not, I'm just holding it myself because it just seems like that's easier. But it shows gloves, furnishings, pumpkin. I will say that at least the things they're showing here are things that were possibly made on this machine. On the central one, it's just like things like that's impossible. There's no way they made that on this machine. It's just knitted items that they showed on the box. So. Um, easy knitting process as a row counter and of course you can do panels or tubes and so that's kind of what they're showing there so let's open this guy up very similar to the centro as far as what is in the package here uh, tips before you start you must get the tension correct or the machine could drop stitches if this happens loosen or tighten the tension it is important to make a swatch with your chosen yarn to find the best tension. You know how we always just swatch things out, guys. Um, it's, it's just joking. Nobody ever does that. With worst is try placing the yarn in the two holes of the threader holder. With thinner yarns, try all three holes. <laughs> with worst is try placing the yarn in two holes of the... What they're saying is like, you know, go through two of them. But I, I've, honestly, for me, I feel like the tension just doesn't work that great. But that's what they're showing here, kind of like it's going in one and out another. I think that would be way too tight, but who knows, you know, I'm sure they know what they're talking about as far as their machine. And it's showing you cast on, all this is in a different language, and this is English on the other side. And I'm assuming this is very similar to any other machine. So let's open this up. Oh, it does have a free gift, which is a pom-pom maker, which are interesting. We'll see how we can work with these guys. But as you can see, there's a couple pieces. There's a tiny one, a medium size, a larger one, and a big, big one. So that's cool. Okay. Um, it, comes it comes with some yarn that you can kind of get the hang of it. And, you know, it's giving you an example of what kind of yarn pie works best. Worsted weight, four, you know, maybe a five. Anything smaller or thinner, it'll work. It'll just be very stretchy because it's just 
really skinny yarn. I don't know how to explain that. It won't take up the space that this thing needs, right? Whether it pulls the fabric and then when it comes tracks and then when you stretch it, it's just going to be really skinny. So if you want like a net or like a mesh look, I guess that's possible. But generally you want something like this. And I mean, this one, it just says knitting accessories. So you have that one, uh, you have a little tiny amount of a pink one. This one's a lot. And this one's like a smaller amount of like a hot pink. A little bit of this gray and this one is on the thinner side these one these ones these than this so I'm assuming they're showing you that again this is more like the pink one this one's a little bit thicker and this one's a little bit on the lighter side so they did mention you know worsted weight and possibly a step lighter than that which would be like a three um, okay and then we have our legs and all that so I recently did a video where I showed I had ordered accessories for the Centro and the legs look just like this. They have like a carve out in them and on my Centro, my 40 pin, it doesn't have that carve out, but they still would work. They're interchangeable. I don't know that you want purple legs with a pink machine, but, uh, or pink legs on a purple machine. But this is what we're going to need obviously to put, um, our stuff together. So we have our legs, we have the suction cups, the screws are in there, your little screwdriver. You can keep on hand for other things. Um, it comes with, let me just, a longer needle, a shorter needle, your yarn needles. Oh. So yarn needles large, larger and shorter and it comes with a crochet hook that's a 3.75 millimeter. Off the top of my head, I don't remember if that's a G or smaller. G H I, Ugh. yeah, it could be F or G. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, and then it has the tensioner, of course. It comes with one, and that is that. So I know the Centro comes with like a few other accessories. One of them being a circular knitting, uh, knitting uh, needle, which I think is actually really cool. It's a nice option to have, and maybe I'll do a video on how can you, you can use that because some people, I'm sure, are like why is this in here? But you can finish off ribbing and do other things like that once you get them on that circular needle. So it is a skill you would have to learn if you're a knitter. You are probably already know, but uh, let's open this up. Ah, it is very very well packaged. I want to say maybe I don't remember. The central was just kind of. Not tossed in there but it was just in there you know it feels a lot bigger I'll show you the 40 pin centro ah. I don't know if you can see the difference oh uh, no of course you can't <laughs> no it's almost impossible um, this little guy can get in frame and this guy quite a bit bigger um, I don't know okay so I need to put the legs on and a lot of people tell you don't turn the machine over but like this thing was in shipping and I'm sure it was turned over and back and everything else so that's fine here you pick if you want it to be a panel a straight panel a fat panel a flat panel that you're going to like make other items with or if you just need something flat I would probably never use that option I'm gonna put it on tube um, I say tube I don't know if it's a tunnel I forgot what they say on the uh, instruction but tube that's what we want to do and let's go ahead and put our legs on I'm going to turn it upside down to do that. And oopsie. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> a little tiny needle. Yarn needle. Um, okay, well there you go. So these guys, they just pop in these spaces and then you do need to screw them down. So obviously that's kind of how they fit. And then the screws are in here. And we're going to do that all around, so all four of them exactly the same. Let me get one of these guys. And a screw. And it's going to be obvious when you're doing this yourself that there's a little hole there for a screw. Um, it is quite small. So I'm going to try to put it on here and try to get it in the right little spot there. Right in the middle. I know my arm's probably in the way. And just screw that down. You don't want to strip it, but you want it to be there nice and sturdy, right? So, nice and tight. And then when you're done, you can pop one of these guys on. And these are kind of hard to get on for the same reason you don't want it just to pop off, right? So I'm going to push that on, try to push it all the way to the center. And maybe I'll have my husband do this later, <laughs> but you're just pushing that. Obviously, you want to be careful with your machine. You need to get this clicked into this little recess right here. And it is not super easy. 
get my nail in there. I suppose one other thing, there we go, you could do is put that on first and then put your leg on, right? If it's easier for this to be in your hands, whatever is easiest for you. If it's easier for this to be here and you're not messing with the machine, try to pop that on, you know, do that that way. And then screw it onto your machine, right? But I'm going to get with the four legs on and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, sorry. I got the last one on. I did put the little foot on before I stuck them on here. So generally at this point, it really wants to stick. So I'll turn it this way. And there it is. It has that, whatever this is printed on there. I can feel it. It feels really nice, actually. Um, okay, tensioner. And then your machine is basically set up. So we're going to take this little guy and pop it on here. And I always forget if it's this way or this way. I guess I can look at the instruction and see what we're looking at. Um, it looks like the big knob part goes down. Let's just make sure. Yep. Feet. Nope. Let's go back over here. Oh, they don't really have a picture of that part. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, it just looks like the bigger part just bigger pieces facing down so we're just going to it really stuck to the table <laughs> um it doesn't push up into these holes what you need to do is bring one in pull it and bring the other side in and there's a little slit there that helps it so yeah that's basically it it moves like that because if you're pulling your yarn you don't want it to just snap off or break so it has to have some give let me clean up and we will get started okay so we have our machine. I'm going to back it up just a little bit. I might have to do something different, but um, let me get on the other side because I'm going to be cranking it over here. Um, we have our counter here. Right now it says 101, which is kind of interesting. So we can reset it to zero, and that's great. We have the tensioner. I don't really use that for the most part. It's set on tube, and we have spin. It should have... Okay, this one has one pin that basically tells you you're ending or starting a row. It's, you know, whatever you think. This one is actually number 48, and then this pin is number one. So, you know, when you're doing your patterns, you want this to be your first one, and just always think of that as number one, you know, or this one as number one. It doesn't matter. It's just there to help you kind of see what you're doing. But you also have a row counter, and it already says one, so I'm going to reset it again. Um, so that's not as important because I know on other ones like that 40 pin you have to watch it because you don't have a counter which I just ordered a counter for it so I'll review that when it gets in um, but something to think about so with this one I'm going to be using this uh, Karen I try to get the same brand because I don't really like mixing brands sometimes one yarn is thinner or different than the other and it can even be within brands but this is Karen one pound worsted weight four medium yarn and this one is white, but it's kind of a little bit off-white. And then I'm going to also mix in with that for our little hat, hopefully, claret. And again, I have another one that's more red, like a brighter red. But it wasn't Karen, and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to stick to Karen. So there's that. The only thing is for the color of my little monkey, I got this one. And I do not have another Karen one. So this is super saver, and hopefully it works. <laughs> so um, Buff Fleck is the one color of this. And again, size 4, medium. But it is a different company. It might work up differently. Okay. Another thing is you can make cakes with your yarn. If that's what you prefer to do so that they're ready to go. I'm just pulling it off the skein. But I have the skein down on the floor. And I'm just making sure it's really loose. So leave yourself like a, a foot. It, that's kind of overkill. But a foot's good of yarn. I'm going to come on this side. Which doesn't really make a lot of sense. But oh well. So if this is my number one. If I'm considering this guy number one. The white one, even though it's number 48, it is the last one. Um, I'm going to take my yarn, the end is in here, the skein is down on the floor, and I'm going to make sure that hook's in there, in front. And then the next one is going to be behind. We're casting on as you turn the handle. So there goes that. This next one should be in front. This next one should be behind. This one in front. This one behind. This one in front. This one behind. And it's that easy. Okay. You can go a little faster, but I just want to make sure you see what I'm doing. This is behind the needle, in front of the needle, behind the needle, in front of the needle. And if you see that any fell off, you know, just take it off and do it again or go back and correct it. But 
I don't really go reverse with this thing. <laughs> and I just hope that everything's in front. Everything's fine. Behind, in front, behind, in front, behind. And this is just your cast on, so it's going to mark one row. And I'm just going to reset it at that point. But if you want to, you can just let it keep going and knowing that you have one. That was your cast on. So, in my mind, and we're back at the beginning. So, if you end up in the back before you get to the white or that first pin that you cast it on, then you're in good shape. So, I'm going to move it a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and take my yarn and pop it into this space right here. There's like a little tensioner, basically, it's where it starts. It's just kind of feeding your yarn. Push it all the way in to that little slit. It kind of continues to the back here. You just want to make sure it's in there nice and comfy. And this next one's coming around. And it actually says that's already two rounds, so there you go. I'm going to go ahead and reset it. Actually, it says 200. Oh, you know what? Is it reading it this way? That doesn't make sense. I have no idea. <laughs> I said 200. Okay, either way, I'm resetting it. And now we're just going to go. I, I'm, I'm going to hold it with my hand. I prefer that. I mean, if you want to, with this one, I would put it in the very last um, hole. There's like three little tiny holes here and put in the last one. It's the loosest because this yarn is bigger and we can try it that way. Let's just try it. Either way I'm still holding this in my hand because if the knot comes up I want that to be in my hand before it gets here and like does anything. So um, this is our first row so I'm going to hold it carefully. This one's just kind of sitting here. I do want to make sure that everything's okay with that. And again we're just going forward, forward, forward and I'm holding it. The tensioner is working for me right now. I want to just make sure that that's a good tension. So what I'm looking for is, let me do a few rounds before I talk about that again. Here we go. I'm going to go a little faster. The tension looks pretty good. Why I'm telling you that is that as you're going, it makes loops. And if these loops were just staying up here and they're kind of loose and they weren't really falling down, then your tension is way too loose. But if they just snap in place, then your tension is too tight and that's not great either. But you just want them to kind of tuck in and like in a natural way. Uh, the tension, there we go. Let me see where we're at. This row counter is funny. It says 600 already for some reason. Obviously it's not 600. It says 604 is what it's saying. And I'm looking to do um, 85 rounds of white. So we're going to do 140 rounds total, but I want white and then some red and then white again and then my main color, the, the sock monkey color, because what I want to do is have a brim, so it's going to be 140 rows. I don't know what's up with this counter, but we'll see if it's... Also, I like to hold the machine, so if I'm using the tensioner, which seems to be doing okay. Um, oh, my yarn got caught, see? Sometimes you got to pay attention. You know, your machine might start struggling, and it'll kind of let you know that, hey, something's up. Um, I like to hold the machine also. Just that helps out. So it says that's seven rows. I don't know. Hopefully it is. I don't think I see any drop stitches or tuck stitches at all. I'm going to pull some of my yarn, make sure it's not getting caught. And I'm just going to keep going, guys. So if I see anything problematic, I will let you know. But for right now, everything looks okay. Other than this thing saying there's 600 rows. <laughs> now it says five again, but it still says eight here, which is correct. I don't know what that first one's doing. Crazy. Okay, nine. It's probably going to be a problem when we start getting into the hundreds. But either way, I'm going to reset it anyway because I, when I change the colors. So we'll see. Right now it says 10. Eleven, okay. Uh, once you get a certain amount, you can kind of give it a tug just to make sure everything's popping down. But you know what? The tension's pretty great, and I have it again in that loosest tension, and I think we're good. So I'm gonna keep going till I get to eighty-five rows, right? Eighty-five on the counter. Okay, guys, I can see that I have a something's going on right here. There's like two or three, and honestly, if I worked with this more often, I would know what the problem is. But since that happened, and this is so easy, all I rather do is take that off. Don't let the yarn go in anymore. And I'm just going to drop it all. So I'm just going to spin without putting yarn in the hole. And everything will start coming off. <laughs> right here. See, there you go. And I'm just going to restart it. 
because what's the point of going through and looking for this specific little area that's a problem and if I can just restart the thing. So see that one right there is probably where the problem really was. When the needle comes up, I'm just going to redo it. So just pull out my yarn, just pull, pull, pull till it all comes apart and I'm going to redo my rows. Just start again and I'll be back. So I'm just going to go back to that one and start again just one behind in front, behind in front, behind in front, behind, okay? And I'm just going to cast on and hopefully when I get back I'll have my 85 rows, okay? Same thing. I'll be back. You know what, this is the third time I'm doing this and this is dropping and tucking a lot of stitches, like a lot. Now it could be the yarn because some yarns do a better job than others. So what I'm going to do is see if I have some white of um, Pound of Love because I know that works pretty well. Uh, there's a other Joanne brands, the Big Twist always works pretty well. This is just, it is kind of rough and all that and I just feel like it's not working out. I mean, I can see there's just like t two stitches here. There's nothing on this one. Uh, there's nothing on this one. <laughs> it's just stuck down somewhere. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. That's what it's been doing. So let's try a different yarn. Okay, guys. So this is actually the next day. I tried again with that Karen yarn, and it just was not working for me. I did have it in the Lewis's Tension. Maybe if I had put it in this middle one, it might be a little different. I tried using hand tension, and then I was just annoyed with the, with the yarn, to be honest. I just figured, you know what, that yarn does not really work in here very well. So I just went out and looked at my tubs, and I got some different yarn. So... This and I recently picked up loops and threads, and I want to say this from Michaels. Yeah, and this is soft classic acrylic, and it is an off-white. It's probably Aaron color. It doesn't just says VS122. Sorry guys, they don't really have names on these. Um, for medium weight, and it is working like a dream. Oh my gosh, I have not dropped any stitches. Look how awesome it looks, right? So I'm on 84 rounds. This counter is not very good. I just want to show you that. A lot of times, um, what I was going to say is. It's user error with a machine like this because unless something is really just broken, it should work for you, you know? So, again, maybe I could have changed the tension in a different way that I hadn't tried and that yarn would be great. Don't get super frustrated, you know? It's easy to tear things back. It's just time. You're going to learn something, right? Every time you do one of these. Um, and so, anyway, as I was going, as it's approaching your table, you don't really want this rubbing your table because they can start dropping stitches for that reason too or whatever. It's just pulling in weird ways. So, I just kind of curl it into itself or do something to bring it up here okay up to the top so it's not touching down here anymore um, I just cast on the same way and I just started cranking and it is doing great we are going to come up on a color change I was going to do the kind of color change where you knot them together with like the kind of like magic never comes apart knot but um, maybe we'll say that for the next time I'm still going to try to do the color change just the regular way where you drop one and bring in a new color um, I am going to use this red heart uh, super saver and uh, the red, the other one was claret and a different thing, right? So this I just chose different ones. Cherry red. Still going to try to use this guy for the top of our hat. So I said about 85 rounds. Um, I just did 84. It's between 84 and 85. So um, we're going to do a color change soon. So what I'm going to do is just crank this until I get my full 85. And I'm just going to pay attention. And I'm just letting the tensioner do the work. So, oops, sorry guys. I don't know if I totally, okay. I'm looking for that white pin to come up. I mean, I'm watching that, but um, and also you can hear that thing when it moves. It goes, think. <laughs> so you're kind of, there's the white one. And it moved between 85 and 86, and it didn't make a sound this time, of course. Why would it? Okay. So if you're counting this as number one or as your last one, whatever it is, it is really 48. It's the last one, but when we cast on, I cast on this one first. So. Whatever it is, just do the same thing every time. I'm going to cut this to leave ourselves just a, a little bit of a tail. You don't need too much. We're not going to do anything with it. A little scary, but it'll be fine. Take it out and make sure it's getting in that one, unless you want to start the next color in there. That's fine. So I'm just going to turn it a little bit more, but we'll, we're going to deal with this in just a minute. From here, I think I was going to do red. <laughs> I really wanted this color to be white, white, but it's off white, so that's okay. Um, see my little notes? Red, five, and then ten more white. That's just some numbers I'm coming up with. You can do whatever you like. So let's get the red. And again, pulling it from the center of the skein. This is the outside. 
and usually the other side will have this guy ready to go but oh there it is see oh that was nice okay I'm only doing five rounds if you want to do ten or whatever you want whatever I'm just looking for the colorway more than anything so we need our yarn to go into that holder right into the whole thing and then into our tensioner which I'm gonna go with the medium tension again because you want to keep it the same basically and you also want this to be cut so I'm gonna stand over here better I'm gonna crank it a little bit just making sure that as I get over here this will be cut I'm holding it making sure this other one went down this is kind of what I want to talk to you guys about when I'm talking about tension if you see a lot of this where you see this loop it's out here it hasn't really fallen yet you want your tension to be as such that it falls down pretty much as soon as it clears this area if it's still up here other ones and it's gonna start dropping stitches for that reason so the tension should have been a little tighter see that popped in and that's because you know we let it go so when you're seeing things like that you're for sure gonna have problems <laughs> so just try to adjust your tension and fix it at that time where was I all the way back here hmm, that doesn't seem right let's put it up here a little bit okay and I'm still turning just making sure I'm holding both ends making sure this gun one gets down in here and it's going to the next one too it did split a little bit of that stitch so we'll see and that tension looks good you see how it just starts dropping now with these guys I can just tie them together over here so I'm just gonna put a little tie it doesn't be too tight you can even put a knot right now if you want but you might have to readjust that later so let's just do a tie that kind of tucks away kind of keep it out of the way so since I just introduced this one I'm gonna oh we're gonna clear our counter it's at zero 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 and I should have done that initially but that's okay this is very forgiving you can do it doesn't really matter so I'm watching this and just making sure everything's good you know that weird knot that we have here just making sure it's not causing any problems and now everything's red it was white and red before so as it passes through here the white goes away and everything should be red and you just you see how it's just dropping into the space that's the kind of tension you want if it's too tight and it's like dunk, snapping in there okay that's one thing but ooh, you heard that didn't like it because my yarn was the skein you know was a little too tight but see that okay so let's go let's keep going and making sure everything's good and that's two full rounds this is a joy when the things work and you might have to try things out guys I wouldn't be discouraged um, I, I had an old video and it had like half a million views on my old channel of like a little kid knitting machine which is still in my garage I should probably bring it out and let Miranda play with it and people were just like I don't know like it's so difficult to understand sometimes it had problems you know that kind of stuff I'm coming up here that is five okay so if that's all you want cool if you want more if you want ten go for ten we're going to ch color change again so I'm gonna just cut this I'm not gonna take that yet we're gonna go back to white for a little bit or the cream color so it liked this yarn and that's great I'm gonna take it off of here again remove it from there give it a little bit of a forward just to make sure this gets in there and we're gonna hold that try to hold it the same kind of tension that you would need right and then this guy needs to catch this yarn so as it's coming through next I'm gonna make sure that that yarn Oop, let's go ahead and put in the tensioner too. Make sure that this yarn gets caught. The other one, we want to keep it a little bit tight. So I'm holding both ends, making sure everything is going right. See this one? It missed. So make sure that gets in there. Okay. Something's going on. Oh, you know what? See how it keeps missing? I didn't get it all the way through this back area of the feed. So just make sure again there's there's always a reason guys and you know I make mistakes all the time so there we go and now it should be getting caught so that's not great I'm gonna go ahead and make sure manually that that gets caught there it is and now it's getting caught <laughs> again I just missed that little tube in the back which I had asked you guys to make sure to pay attention to but you know I'm gonna tie these two ends together just to get get them out of the way you know like I said you tie them a little snug just so that that lump is tucked away I'm gonna reset my counter I'm gonna do 10 and I do it kind of slowly just making sure that everything's going okay I mean I was going a little faster here we are back at the the 
color change so just make sure everything's doing what it needs to do and you guys this is awesome i'm telling you the other one it was doing just fine and then it just started dropping and i'm like i'm not the type of person yes there are ways to fix it just pull it out <laughs> i mean i guess it depends on how far you are in your project okay i'm gonna keep going and at this point we're just gonna crank until we get to 10 and you see how the little loop is just falling down hopefully you can see that that is really what you're looking for guys because it will oh <laughs> My red yarn got caught up in the white yarn. Um, it will definitely start dropping stitches if you're not paying attention to that. And, it, and the tension, that's, I think that's another thing. People talk about tension, but they don't really say what you're looking for. And what you're looking for is for that loop to go down, not to snap down like tsh, so tight, you know, but to not be so loose that it's just sitting around causing problems for you, right? Uh, let me get this red yarn away from here. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna keep cranking till we go to 10, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back here. Right at the color change, I stopped just in time. Um, I don't know when this actually clicks over. I feel like it clicks over when the white one passes through here, but by that time, you've already got these other guys. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It, it seems weird when it actually turns over, but again, it's not a science. You guys, this is all just, it's fine, <laughs> in my opinion, if I'm one over or whatever. So that white pin is holding down the uh, beige color, and now I'm going to start this guy. Now, this hat is 140 rounds. That's good for an adult. And it may have a brim, it may not. It depends on how it fits you. What I'm making it do is that when I have the cuff, is that it folds over. And one side is going to be completely beige, and the other side is going to have the striping. So if you like that, great. If that's not what you want, you can make the hat exactly the same on both sides. Start off with some of this, go into the beige, the red, the beige, and then go back to this. Incorporate some black if you want a little black accent. You know, whatever it is you want, go for it. Um, okay, so again, this guy has his yarn on the outside. We're looking for the one on the inside. Um, move the rest of these away because we are done and we're just going to finish with this yarn. And I hope it's not problematic. <laughs> um, this one has like a little tweedy look to it, which I've used before and it was fine. Uh, of a different brand. But okay, let's take this out. Again, he needs to go in there. Make sure that drops down. And then this guy, when he comes in, all the way down into that little channel, make sure it's catching here because we already kind of passed that. So I'm going to hold it for a second while it catches. Okay, I'm going to reset my t my timer. My uh, excuse me, I'm going to reset my row counter. And so here we are. I'm going to hold that there so that it catches. Holding the beige one also just to make sure it's getting in there. Don't hold it too tight. You don't want it to pop out, but you just want to make sure it's catching. Okay, a couple of stitches, and I'm going to tie these guys together. I'm not putting a knot yet. I'm just making sure it's really sturdy down there. Okay, now let's see how this guy does. That looks good. Again, it needs to pop down. The other thing with this stuff is that it has a little fleck to it, so there's little extra fibers that can get caught up. Okay, I'm just watching this guy as he comes around. Everything looks good. Yay! Give it a little pull, a little tug. Okay, and now I'm going to crank out 40 rows just to finish our hat. So, nothing else, just going for it. And just pay attention. I'm going to, you know, do this kind of easily because, again, that little fleck can cause problems, possibly. But I hope it doesn't. So I'm just going to release some yarn. That's all I'm doing right now is just pulling a ton of yarn out of the skein and letting it fall to the floor. And I'll just keep going till I get 40 more rounds. It's already going into round four right here. I am so happy with this. Okay, so again, as it's getting longer and it wants to touch the table, just pull some up. Now, don't pull it up so much that you're gonna pop off your stitches, but just bring it up. And you know, every once in a while you can kinda, I haven't done this at all, just to be honest, but you can pull your work just to kinda bring it down. But um, I haven't done that at all in this whole project and it it's doing great, so. I'll be back when I have 40 more. I'm impressed. This is so cute. I love the color and it's working great. Okay, I'll be back. We are coming around the bend and I will say, I've been trying to go slower so I can see when the white um, pin comes up and when this changes over and it seems to change over when the white pin gets here. So something about the way this is set up, the way it moves, gets it pretty right. So let me see. 
Like right now we're at 38. That's where it chained over, it's going to, and I just did, the white pin just came up and it went to 39. So, kind of interesting. It's just so hard to see because you're going so fast. I'm like, when is it actually changing? <laughs> so anyway, um, it's almost at 40. <laughs> actually, I think it did go to 40. Did I already pass it? This thing goes so fast, like as you're cranking that, there it is, 41 it says. But anyway, all right, well that is the end of our hat. So I'm going to take about two feet of yarn, although you don't need two feet of yarn. But I'm going to take that, pull it out of the guide, pull it out of here, and put it into the center here. Um, I did start with this one, and I'm ending with this one. So really, you probably want to end with this other one, because now you're giving one extra stitch, but that's okay. So I'm going to just give it a turn all the way around, holding this in the center, without doing anything, <laughs> okay? And when we start getting back to the front, to the beginning, we'll be able to pick up our stitches, okay? So I'm doing this. Everyone, I want you to see that every single one of these has a little stitch in, in the back, every single one. Not up here, we, you know, we didn't put anything in it. But behind here, there's this little stitch, okay? And there, that's, it looks the same way on this side, but um, when we come around, it's just going to make it so that we can pick them up. So we're releasing them, basically, okay? Now, I'm pretty much back to the beginning and I don't want to drop any of my stitches <laughs> so I'm going to get the needle and we're going to start working okay so let me go grab the needle that came with I suppose and I'll be right back. Okay guys I'll readjust I just want to show you I'm just going to use the little guy you can well eh, let's use the middle size one I came with a small one and then that longer one and then this guy uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this on my needle and we're not quite yet where we want to be because this, let me get, let me readjust, I'll be right back. Hopefully you can see. So this guy is still back over here. We need to get him all the way around <laughs> pretty much. So it's a little scary, but you see how he's going to pop off? So that's not Sorry, our I'm just looking at my stitches. Thing. I'm going to keep going until the one that has our yarn <laughs> is just past itself, okay? Because see, as I was going to do that, I don't know if you noticed, maybe you want to go back, this one popped off. Okay, he kind of came off. If he comes off, there's nothing left, and you're going to drop that stitch. So, go into that guy, pull all the way through, and if this is scary to you, you can put your finger over the next one, because as you're pulling them off, sometimes they want to pop up. So you're just getting that little loop that is right there. It's on these little holders, okay? Not the loop from your working yarn here, not here, it's over here. That little loop that's in the back, and you can pick up a couple at a time before you push them all through. Try not to split your yarn, because if you split your yarn, it's just going to be a, a nightmare, because you're going to have to try to get that off. Okay, so I have like four or five. Sorry, let me back up again. And maybe I'll go ahead and pull them through, and as you're doing that, make sure you're not pulling off the other ones without having gone through them. There you go. And I will continue. Let me try to manually do this. I know the sunlight is coming in harsh now. Let me get in front of it. Um, this one, and I'm not going to turn it anymore. Some people will keep turning it. I'm good <laughs> because the ones that are left at the end of this haven't quite popped off yet. Or they're not quite where you need them to be. Did I just lose one? Oh my gosh. See? Okay. I'm going to catch that guy before we <laughs> run away with it. Um, when I pulled up, it pulled this guy off. And they're really squirrely, you guys. I mean, these little loops, honestly, they are crazy. So, let me see. If it was this one, it was this guy. It wasn't this one. I need to get this other guy up. Ah, this piece right here. So, I'm going to get my crochet hook, and I'm just going to pull it through. It's not going to be <laughs> exactly what we need it to be, but that's okay. I just need to catch this guy so he doesn't just take off on me. Okay. Generally you have to go back a couple and grab it, but um, I'm not going to be too worried about it. Okay, and I'm going to keep grabbing them. <laughs> That's really scary. So again, just be careful a few at a time and don't get too ahead of yourself like I did there, okay? So pull, making sure you're not losing. Let me go back a little bit. Ah, so all I did with my crochet hook, nope, wrong way, was just try to grab that one that I was going to be losing. 
okay and just keep going okay so I'm gonna keep going till I come back around to the front and I'll show you what that looks like okay, so I just picked up 45 and 46 is still kind of trapped under so that's why I just kind of wait a little bit so when I go 46 just got released like the hook recessed and then since there's nothing there it doesn't bring anything up 47 just got released and 48 and again because I'm a fraidy cat I don't just keep going until they're all done because if you do a little bit more it's just gonna fall off so there we go guys we just released our work from this so we are done with the machine and she did really well um, again it did it was a little bit hit and miss like what's up with the yarn you know and how that works I will say this is probably gonna be a slouchy hat because I'll tell you what I made it so that this when you fold it inside out so it's half and half um, you know what I'm saying when you tuck the one side into the other um, this is the brim at the base and then this is the top of the hat if you want it to be so when you fold it over on the brim what you're gonna want to do is your color change your red back to cream over here on this white side so we did 85 in white or cream color what you're gonna want to do is maybe maybe 60 in that cream color I don't know and then go from there but for right now what we're gonna do is this and give it a stretch I know it's like out of frame big time maybe I should back up a little bit and it is super windy today so I'm sorry if the light is like acting funny uh, I just left the needle in there because we're gonna use it in a minute but I'm just gonna pull this and pull that maybe a little at a time just to straighten this guy out and you really see the length of this this is gonna be a really slouchy hat or again a hat with a brim if you had done your color switches up here so maybe do 60 rounds do your red for five do the cream again for you know another um, 60 let's see duh, duh, duh. you really want like 70 being the middle of this and so if you want some plus a little bit so 60 five five more of white I would do 10 more white and then do the rest of the brown hope that makes sense so when you fold it in half it'll work out so what we're gonna do right now is we have plenty of needles so I'm gonna grab another little needle this yarn needle and I like to just pull it from here and go ahead and make it into its circle if you want to join them together to do that people have different ways of finishing these off but basically these guys the yarns coming from over here okay so if I pull it it's gonna tighten my hat you see it? no I don't know if you see it yet but I like to take it a little bit further than that so we have that one I'm gonna go through the next loop that's on that same yarn just to reinforce it a little bit so I go into that next loop into the next loop maybe two or three of them just so that as I pull it it'll still pull tight because you're just in the same circuit let's say but just kind of pulling it this way just giving a couple extra stitches to be tacked in and just keep pulling and of course as you're doing that you're making this correct because it's all curly cued keep pulling tuck in pull 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 tuck in okay so this is a, a big hat I think if you don't want to brim at all and you don't want it slouchy then you're gonna do less but I did 140 rounds and that's for a brimmy slouchy hat don't pull too tight because you do not want to break your yarn because you can do that after a minute right so let's do that I'm almost there I'm back at the beginning I'm gonna cut a little bit of this off again that's why you don't need a ton but you do need some to help you cut that off if you want to use this to help you attach a pom-pom or whatever then just you know leave a longer tail um, I was thinking about making a pom-pom in this video we'll see how long this video ends up being and also about slip stitches I saw a video it's kind of old if I can find it I'll try to link it for you guys of a woman who purposely drops stitches and purposefully um, or purpose yeah on purpose <laughs> drop stitches and things like that so she can show you how to fix it and it is a little bit of a pain you guys but you know if you're at the end like I was right now you know I'm gonna just kind of fudge it but if you're at the end of your work and you're like ah obviously it's better to just fix the stitch um, so I'll link her video in the description box if I can find it um, so okay I just finished that off pretty much I'm gonna take a couple of tacking stitches so just kind of back 
where I was just to do a little knot so it doesn't come apart later there's a little knot and then just go some more because we might still use this yarn so I'm leaving it there for now I'm gonna leave that there and on the other side we're gonna do the same thing is pull 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 and I, again I like to tack in a few more of these guys just to make it easy this one's very easy to see now what you're essentially going to do if you haven't seen these videos I'm sure you have is you're going to take this one kind of pop it inside out like this and push through so that you end up on the other side over here with these guys okay as I'm saying this is just like a super slouchy hat or if you do the brim if you fold it this way it's just gonna be the white and the brown showing so I probably should have done my detail on the other side you know that's up to you if you want to wear the hat inside out you can wear it inside out and have the um, the white side showing and then when you do the brim this little red brim will be at the end maybe I'll show you that at the end I am gonna put a pom-pom on this though because I wanted a big old slouchy hat so I won't really be able to show you that but uh, we'll talk about it okay so again you're pulling tight and at this point we can use this one to tack these guys together like if my hand is in here if I look I can get my whole finger through because it's going through the white one plus this one um, just go through there keep going tack into the white one underneath you can also do this when you're doing the pom-pom because why not you're already there and you can go back out into the other one if you're just really trying to tack it down but again if we're doing a pom-pom I guess we don't need to do all this but <laughs> I'm just going back through the brown one on this side just to keep them together and then back down into the beige one <laughs> down in here and you just kind of see where you're at especially if you want to reverse this you don't want to make it too messy but since I'm using a pom-pom I don't think it matters and so here we have these guys I can tie these two guys together you don't have to cut it off quite yet because we're gonna add a pom-pom you can add the pom-pom with his own strings you can add the pom-pom with these strings you know um, I was kind of going to add it with these strings but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense so maybe I'm still gonna go up and down with this one so tack it down as much as you like of course and then maybe we'll make a red pom-pom I think that'd be cute okay so hopefully I'm still in frame and so I'm going to tuck it down a little bit more up here again just wherever popping out wherever since it's going to be hidden by the pom-pom anyway but you know towards the center obviously and maybe back in here and then back into the beige and maybe this other area I was already there okay and maybe another little tie and if we're going to use the red pom-pom to tack down, then I'm just going to give this a really nice knot. And let's turn this inside out and bury these threads in between the layers. Because this is double layer, right? So we can take this guy and we can take this guy. Put them in this huge yarn needle opening. And then pull them through and just lose those tails, right? So just pull it through somewhere and the tails get kind of lost in here. And trim that away, give it a tug, and those are lost. So again, it could be reversible at this point. Right? And we just have a little bit of red showing. Um, but my point was to make it like this, a big slouchy hat. and then we're gonna put a red pom-pom on it so uh let's go to my craft table to do that we don't have to be here i'll be back so we're here in my craft room um i just brought the red because i want the pom-pom to be red and i was just curious because this does look bigger than other hats and remember the um i feel like the counter is a little bit wrong <laughs> but um you know i i don't know so suppose this was 10 rounds might have done 11 so you can kind of count so here like just look for the little like each twist or each little loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
All right, that one's good. How about five? This should be five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. Again, sometimes I went overboard, but that's okay. This is, again, 140 rounds. We did 85, so that means half of it, 70, plus another 15 in the beige. So if you want less beige, do, you know, 75 or whatever, and you only have this little lip kind of over here. And then you start your red. You want 10 rows of red, you want less red. You want white, you want to incorporate some black just to make it look more fun. Whatever it is that you like, it's going to be great. Um, again, this is a pretty good sized hat because I have a huge head <laughs> and I tried it on that's why it's a little more stretched out because obviously this last part isn't really on my head. Um, and it fits perfectly great. Um, a little snug so I'm sure for an average size head you're going to be great. Uh, I can give you, oh no I can't, I left my ruler somewhere else. Hold on, I'll use this. After I stretched it out, it's like nine and a half right now, so 18 and a half. Obviously, there still has more stretch, right? In this area where it's not super stretched out, um, it's about eight inches over here. So, you know, obviously, it stretches out. Have fun with it. I mean, don't be afraid of color changes. Just try what works for you. If you rather do like the um, that join where you join the two yarns together and they don't come apart it's like this really funky little join maybe i'll link i think i know of um a video it's only like a minute because that's all she does in the videos to show you guys what that looks like i'll link it it's not going to be super exact because you don't really know where it's going to pull your yarn in after, if you use that and also when you make that little knot make sure as you're bringing it into your work that you're going to take it out of the tension guide because that little knot will get stuck in the tension guide so make sure it's out it can go through the yarn feeder that's fine the feeder that goes you know to your actual you know, little hook, um, but in the tensioner, it's going to get stuck. Okay. These are super basic and I'm going to say, I know how to use them. <laughs> if you ever use pom pom makers, they're similar in what they do. So obviously as they make pom poms, what I'm saying is the way they do it. Right. So like these guys, I feel like I'm supposed to be able to cut them in half. Okay. All right, what are we doing? This is very interesting because we have two of them and I don't believe it's because you have two pom-poms. I think it's because you need both sides is what I'm trying to say. Like you have to end up putting them both together or something. Does that look good? That might be it. Generally what happens is let's release these. Yes, something like that, right? Isn't it something like that where you like tile around and then you're gonna close them up and latch them that's weird that they're still so separate though but anyway and then once you do that you cut the thing okay we're gonna do that so this makes a tiny one this makes a one that's a little bit larger hopefully you can see maybe an inch or an inch and a half pom-pom this one's like two and a half ish two inches maybe this one's probably like three inches almost I want to go with this one because I want to be ridiculous about it. <laughs> so let's do this one. And hopefully, I'm going to do this correctly. I don't know. So again, they're these are super basic. They feel nice, though. And you would think that maybe this one tucks into that. But no, I think what it is is that this one's opposite this one. See, these two things are the same. These two things are the same. So let's open these guys up. <laughs> and let's pretend that I'm doing this correctly. And hopefully, it'll work. Okay, so we have our yarn. You're just going to start somewhere, right? You're going to hold your yarn. And you know what? I'm going to start on this side so I can loop the right way. We're going to loopy, loopy, loop. And as you're doing this, obviously, you want to spread the yarn out. You know what's really fun about this, though? I've been watching a lot of videos. Oh, making mochila yu type things. Maybe we remove this up here. And, um,. You can bring in different colors, like as I'm doing this, maybe I want to bring in some black or some beige or, you know, some of that brown or whatever, let's just say. Um, you can definitely do that. And then you can even make patterns within the pom-pom when you do things like that, but I don't know how to do it because I'm not that good. But, um, okay, guys, this is going to take a while because you really want to fill this up. I'm not being too tight, like as far as like pulling this really tight, but you do want to fill in every space, so, you know. Sometimes as you get your groove, I'm going to put this on the floor, I think. Um, you start getting it a little more and more. I could probably need some in here. You want everything to be pretty even and really full. So as we're going through here, you know, I probably should have done this started on the left going towards the right and then going back. Oh my gosh. This way and then going back in the other direction. And it starts filling up really well. OK, 
I can see I caught it in the back here. Oh, there we go. Something, a little fiber that I don't want. Well, it'll probably fall out. Okay, I'm not gonna bore you guys, but I'm gonna keep doing this till it's full and full and full, right? Really nice and full. And that depends on you, honestly. If you want it to be kind of loose, I guess that's one thing. But generally with pom-poms, you want them to be pretty full. So I'm gonna continue. I need more on these edges. And I will be back, and then we'll do the same thing on this opposite side. Generally, you want even more than this, but I am kind of done with it, so I'm going to leave that there. And just cut a little bit off, and just kind of oh, leave that there, because you're going to need to do the other side. So just tuck it somewhere if it stays great. Okay, same thing on this side. And get my yarn end. Oh, that's the wrong end. And same thing over here. Like I said, we'll start on this side this time. And you can fold it, however makes it more convenient for you to do this. Obviously you want these to be the same, so let me just wrap this a little bit before I move on and try to adjust this. Stay the same, there we go. Okay, same thing. I'm just gonna wrap, wrap, wrap till it looks similar to this side, at least as much as what's on this side. I'm not counting, you're just, you're just going for it. Okay, and then again, all the way to the edges, and back around. You'll find your rhythm. And I hope I'm doing this right. <laughs> like I said, I'm not familiar with this very basic thing, but the clover, the clover ones are very similar, but it's kind of encased for you. It has like that little outside part, I don't know. It's just the same kind of technique, just done a different way, so. I can see I'm missing a lot in the center there, so let's build that up. Okay. And I'll just continue doing this for another couple minutes, and I'll be right back. I'm doing a shameful thing here, because you really should fill it up, like just ridiculously fill it up, but you know, that's pretty good. So now you fold this in half, I'm assuming. I mean, that seems right. We're gonna cut into it, and then we'll stick it together with some yarn. So. Uh, make sure these guys are meeting, and that's why we have these little clippies that keep it together. Okay, cool. On this side, on this side, and this is just a little freebie that's in here. So, I mean, it's pretty nice. It's, why not, right? You're going to need it at some point. Um, now we're going to cut our fluff, I hope. <laughs> um, I wanted to get some pointy scissors. I don't know if these are going to do it for me, but we'll try. And you're just going to go into wherever you can get in here and start cutting, right? And since you have that bump, but the other side's flat, remember when we put these together, like opposite each other, that helps you get in there. So again, I mean, you can really max this out. Just because this is a big pom-pom, it was just a lot of yarn and I was done doing the winding, but uh, it still works. So you can just go straight across, all around, how cute. And then, of course, you're gonna perfect it when you're done because it's gonna be a little bit wonky here and there. Look at that. Okay, do not take it off or you're gonna have a ton of little fibers just everywhere. I'm going to take a piece of yarn. Now you can just tie it or you can make like a little loopy thing, however you think you want to do this. I'm gonna give myself a good amount because it is a big pom-pom and I don't know how much we need. So that's about a foot of yarn, I would say. What I was going to do is loop it in half like this and then catch it in itself. You can definitely just do this, pull it through and make a knot but I thought I would better do it like this. So we'll see if that's a good idea. So you're gonna get this in here because basically when you take this off, this is what's gonna hold everything together. And I'm just looping it inside there, right? And this, to me, just is easier to have this little loop because you can go like this and when you pull it, you're pulling against itself. And I can even feel this snug in, it kind of came in as nice and tight as you want to pull it. Okay, and then after that you can split it in half even and then go back in the other direction. So now you've looped it, but you're also going to do a knot. And I feel like that's just super safe. Okay, there we go. There's a tie and then a knot. Right? Now, here's the fun part. Do not try to shave them right now. I mean, I guess you could, but you won't really know till everything's off. Oh, you guys, I think we got it. Okay, so we have to unclip this and just take it off. So I'm gonna open this one side up. That's pretty easy. Honestly, for this being a free gift and you get so many sizes, yes, this worked really well. I know the Clover one's a little confusing because the way it opens like this and opens like that, it's like weird. <laughs> but um, I think I've done a review on them, but maybe that was the old channel, I don't know. 
super easy you guys oh my gosh so get your little fluffs you can kind of fluff it up to, not to be too like oh this is the best thing ever I mean that's not bad right even already obviously I'm gonna trim it and make it look a little more round but there's very few pieces that I need to do that with so that's pretty cool just give a little haircut I'm just kind of doing this. I'm not really paying attention to what I'm catching. I'm just kind of going like that. Um, there are people who make whole little creatures with this kind of thing. Oh, how cute would it be for like Halloween to have like a little creature, like a little monster hat. I used to make them for Dorian when he was little. Um, and put like a little monster on top with like googly eyes or something, right? From this guy. And that looks pretty good. I'm trying to get rid of that center. Ooh, I don't want this stuff everywhere. You guys, I'm just taking my time in this video. Sorry if that's not <laughs> simple, like really quick videos, and that's not what I do here, so sorry, but that's just how it is. Um, okay. That looks pretty good. I don't know. I mean, I can continue doing something, but I feel like I like it. I'm happy with it. I'm not even doing anything with it. I was like going like this and I'm not even touching anything. Um, yeah, I'm sure we can perfect that better. Okay, let me clean this up. Let me put these away because we need to attach it. I'll be so, right back. Lots of ways to tie these on, to put them on. I can just pull it through. You can do a button thing, a shank thing, something that helps you remove it and put it back on. You can put it on both sides. Like that way you can remove it from the one side, put it on the other. Whatever it is you like, I'm just going to stab down in here. <laughs> Pull one of these yarns through, stab down next to there, and I'm just going to tie it on the inside. That way we can remove it for washing and stuff, but um, you know, whatever. I just have one on one side, one going down to the other side, and we'll turn this guy inside out. I'm going to hold on to these threads, and it's just like right here, the way it looks on the inside one, sorry. I just want to make sure that's pretty much on the top over here. It is. Very cute. And down in here, I can tie these, you know, put away the little ends or whatever if you want to um, do whatever you're going to do with it. Or you can just tie it with like a couple that and then maybe a safety knot, right? And that way you can remove it when you want to wash it. You could always add another red string in there. If something happens to this yarn, you can always just add another one, attach it, you know, and then attach it again. But there we go. Super cute, flouncy, scrunchy, slouchy hat. Um, of course, the back of it, I would say, is over here where we did our color changes. Um, but not bad at all. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention was tying off the color changes. I just realized I did not do that, but to be honest, it'll be fine. Um, you definitely want to put a knot. Remember, I only tied it. As you're working with it, you can do the tie and you can do the knot at the same time. It's not a big deal. Right now, if I really wanted to, I could probably find it right here. It's right here and tie them better to knot them off, but definitely want to put a knot. I am so sorry, I forgot. Okay, um, well, that's it, guys. So thanks for watching. I'm going to fish through here and find my ends and knot them better. Um, Cause again, you can always pick through here. I can see that this is the end right here where it knotted with the other one. Sorry. And then just, of course, bury those back in. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will have uh, links in the description box. I'll have images coming up and um, yeah, that was a lot. Again, with these machines, I feel like it's user error, myself, whoever, there's, unless the machine is really just off kilter or like broken, like the, you know, things not coming up or whatever. Um, generally, just try out different tensions, different yarns. It might just be that one skein and maybe another skein of the same color with the same company works, but you know, you can kind of tell. If you have a yarn and it's wanting to fall apart, it's wanting to like unravel, you know what I'm saying? Like kind of do this kind of thing where it's trying to open up its plies, it's not going to work that great. So just look for a yarn that looks really well wound and everything and you probably have better luck. All right guys, well thanks for watching. I mean just coming up, like I said, links will be there. I love this little machine. I love that it's purple. I like the size that it knits. Um, I think it's going to be really great. So if you have any questions, leave them in the description box. Uh, leave them in the description box. No, leave them in the comments and I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.